What's up guys, I'm Jordan from RK Tunes and behind me we have an X3M. I have one of these also as I showed you before. We did intakes and stuff on that car with a tune. On this car, we're gonna do intakes only and we wanna show you guys the before and after sound of the intakes and then also an uh, overview on how exactly to install it and a little bit of why we chose to do it the way that I did. And we'll also compare it to stock and show you a few other things while we're in here. But I'm gonna go over a few things on the how to do it. And like this one's a pretty easy install. It should be like an hour, hour and a half if you've never done it before. If you have, my guys can probably bang out way faster because they know like what hardware is where. I don't know what hardware is where, but I'll point to all the hardware you have to remove and sort of what you take off and why, why we do it this way. So right off the rip, you're gonna start by getting hood open. This strut bar comes off. There's little plastic clips right here, right there. These strut bars have to come off too. Both of these, so Islam will come with tools in a second and he'll start taking all the strut bars off. Once you take all the bars off, these clamps also have to be removed. That one, this one, this one, this one, and then once those are all out, We'll show you guys. He's gonna come now, take all that off that I just mentioned. Underneath these things too, there's a, a bolt right here, a nut. He's gonna take off the hardware for that. There's one or two, two. So there's another one in here too, but once we get off this little plastic thing, he usually uses a tool, I got lucky in my hand, but once we get this off, and all this comes off, under here there's another one to get this bar off. But he's gonna take the bars off right now, and then these hose clamps, and once that's off, this air box rips right up, and then we'll show you guys what's next. So we got the air box out and something for right now, when you put our intakes on the car, there's no air box cover, which the air box in this car is actually the engine cover. So I'll show you guys right now. This air box is the engine cover. So normally the pipes go in, there's filters inside, and then it's the cover. Right now, we had a brackets made and the bracket, like the bracket manufacturer could not do what I wanted to. So now we're doing a simpler bracket design. In the future, You'll actually unbolt all these screws that hold this together and this top half comes off and then there will be a bracket that goes across this and underneath this piece will be a multi-piece bracket. It'll reuse these two screws and these two screws. It'll go on, strut bar will go over it and then you'll clamp it together with these screws with a little nut on the bottom. It won't be the factory screws, it'll be a bolt and nut on the bottom. So that way your engine cover is still on. If you order an intake from us before we have these brackets in stock, you'll be sent it as soon as we get them. Or depending on when you order, if you want intakes for this car, it will just come with it automatically. But we have as many brackets being made as we had intakes made. So we'll have enough for everyone. And then one more for my original like, prototype set. But yeah, so this is not gonna go back on right now, but if we want, we can probably show you towards the end how it will look with it, with the brackets. You guys also will see in a second how he's gonna take, rip the grills out 
and then also take the ducting out. Luckily on this car there's no trimming and then one of the intakes has to be removed, one of the inlets. So he'll show you, to get the little clip off, this guy is sort of really hard. It attaches um, on the bottom here, on both sides and the top. So it's a little hard to pull this up to get all the sides to release properly, but it does come off. The only inlet you're gonna have left is this one. From the factory, it's rotated a little bit that way. With our intake, you're gonna rotate it this way a little bit. And it, it, it has an O-ring in there to seal and stuff, but with our design, it ends up going this way for a little bit clearance reasons. Other than that, once it's all apart, it's a pretty simple thing to throw it back together. If you want, I'll show you guys how the intakes lay out on the floor. This customer wanted blue filters. We have blue and red filters, both as an option on the website. The factory tubing is like pretty large in the box, then it goes down to like small panel filters. So what we ended up doing was, I went to three and a half inch right away on both sides, which is huge. It's like a little tight to get through a frame rail. A lot of the other people that run front mount intakes that are metal in these cars run a three or three and a quarter inch outer diameter pipe. I ran three and a half inside. So that gives you as much airflow as possible. You can't do that with metal like you can with a, a silicone because the silicone will crush and conform. So I'd rather have one spot that's like this. The top gets bigger and the sides get a little tighter, um, which will make a hair smaller than effectively the three and a half. But I'd rather have that than going with a three and a half inch, a three inch pipe or three and a quarter pipe everywhere. This is the best way. Also, these intakes, if you see there's little lines on them, the reason why this is wire reinforced, so it's extremely difficult to ever be able to make it suck shut. Uh, some other people have tried making silicone intakes for different cars that are non-wire reinforced. This part over here might not have that much wire in the beginning, but you'll feel it's still extremely hard silicone to start with because of the amount of layers and the mesh. Then the wire makes it even tighter to suck shut because what happens is the filters go 10,000 miles, 20,000 miles down the road. They get clogged up. It creates a lot of vacuum. When this sucks shuts, it'll feel like the car shuts off. Especially on bends. Or, well, depends on how it is. Bends and also like really long straights like this, if it did not have it, I bet over time, heat, uh, it would be a huge problem. So that's why we did it all with the wire reinforced silicone. We have our intakes with our air filters. We made these based on previous ones that we had where they were the same thing without the thing in the front, but adding the little filter in the front looks really, really cool. And it also gives you a little more filter surface area. So there's cotton oiled filters. I don't like the stainless steel ones that other people use. They might sound a hair different, but they're horrible for your motor because it doesn't filter. Like This is an actual filter, it does its job. But this is the way on the intakes, super simple. This hose clamps right onto the turbo. That has a joiner pipe, the other one that goes into the inlet. And it goes together. Getting this through a frame rail though, you're gonna see, it is a little tight. We suggest spraying with soapy water of some sort to really just be able to jam it through. But this is a layout of the intakes, pretty much. Something like that on the car. If you guys are interested in buying these intakes, we'll have a link below to rktunes.com. We have red filters in stock, blue filters in stock, and these intakes. So once again, link below to get these on your car.
So this might look a little weird, the intake, how this swoops down like this, but it's sort of the only way I could do it and be happy without having a crazy bend here or still starting the bend on that, which is a little bit weird. We cut one down more and more and more and I wasn't happy. So this will have a downward slope to it, but it all clears the air, air box and stuff pretty good when it's when it's on there. If anything, God put this touched, it moves with the motor, so nothing will happen at all. But yeah, it has a little bit of downward, downward slope. He got the filter in the front, the customer wanted the blue filters. It can be tweaked and stuff, but that's pretty much how they sit. And then we'll throw it all back together now. Or as long as I throw it all back together, pop the grills in. So this is sort of kind of how it will sit once it's all done and right. And like I said, you'll have a bracket that runs across this piece. And then you'll have a nut and bolt on the bottom, pretty much, or a bolt through the bottom and on the top if you want to make it a little bit easier, even though you'll see it it'll look a little bit weird. But we have a flat bracket across the top. We'll probably have pictures of that on our website later with a brace up, but it's gonna be very self-explanatory. Flat bracket across the top a bracket along the bottom and probably two washers to make it all about level height. And that will place this back on, so that way it doesn't look like this. You don't have the engine cover, it looks like this, which you get to see all the electronics, and it looks pretty crappy in my opinion, and I sort of hate it. So luckily it still has all the weather shielding, so no water should really go down there or anything like that. It just looks bad. It is way better to have a cover on it. So yeah. But uh, he's, we're pretty much done other than this strut bar, strut bar, and we'll get right to the sound clips. He got the intakes back on. We're gonna show you guys exactly what these sound like. And maybe we've been throwing the before again, just a little quick rev, so you can see just how big of a difference these intakes make. This is just freestanding revving. Once that's done, we're gonna take it on the street, and do a few pulls going past the videographer, so you guys can actually hear exactly how loud these are on the street. Because it is, it is literally insane. And then after that, I'm gonna be out, you're not gonna see me again. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Like and subscribe if you do and you want to see more. Now to the sound clips. 